Hello there, it's your girl Daphne back with another video. This time I'm bringing you five DIYs for summer and I'm so excited to share, so let's get started. Our first DIY is a boho fabric planter and this is option one. I'm using some leftover fabric from my recent upholstered nightstand. And just so happened the first piece that I picked up was the perfect size. So I'm going to be using that for around the planter. And now I'm just cutting out the base circle. I find that freehand making the circle is much better for me because I have a good eye for cutting shapes and just making straight lines when I'm cutting fabric. But if you need, you can just trace out the bottom of the planter on the reverse side and just cut your shape out. Funny fact about myself, my first job was at a fabric and craft store. I was a senior in high school and actually I majored in high school in fashion design and I also went to FIT for college. So we're going to make the seam now and you just want to make sure that you put right sides together and I'm making roughly about a half an inch seam using um, hot glue. Now for this first option, I'm just turning down about a half an inch and I'm just hot gluing um, around the top edge and I had pinked the edge of the fabric um, not necessarily because I didn't want it to unravel I just like the, the style of it I actually do like it when it's frayed a little on the edges for this planter I like to introduce myself again I'm Daphne I want to welcome everyone to my channel Anyone that clicked on my video for the first time today, welcome. And all of my returning subscribers, welcome back. I hope you enjoy this video. I've been getting requests recently to make longer DIY videos. So I decided for my summer uh, collaboration video to do a five DIY. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Now this is the fun part. What I'm doing is pinch pleats. So you basically do exactly as it said. You pinch off a little bit of fabric. In this case, it's anywhere from a quarter of an inch to a half an inch. And I am just using a little dab of hot glue and I'm pressing it down. Try not to press too hard that the fabric attaches to the pot because you do want this planter to be removable. Also try to spread out your pin tucks um, and you can go back in if you feel that you need to add more but you can't take them away once you've added the glue. I do like it to be a billowy effect so I think that more tucks with a smaller depth is the best because you get like the ballooned effect. And then after you finish this, you're just going to hot glue the little round circle that we created, and then you're all done. So I hope everyone is enjoying the start of spring, and I hope that you're getting out and enjoying the beautiful weather, whether it be in your backyard or just walking around the block. It's amazing to be able to have some fresh air and to enjoy the outdoors. So this video is in collaboration with Antoinette from Simple Yet Chic. This is her most recent video. It's DIYs for Ramadan. Today we're both doing summer DIYs and we're going to be sharing them. So after you finish watching my video, head on over to Antoinette's and I hope that you enjoy her summer DIYs. 
Her information will be linked in the description box and I'm sure you will not be disappointed because Antoinette does amazing DIYs. So I decided to show a second option of the fabric planter just because someone might want it to be a finished edge instead of the raw edge. So what I did was I did a folded back um, edge. So you basically fold back the fabric about two inches and then you do like an accordion fold back of about an inch and then you're just going to um, put glue about every three inches. Really make sure that you pinch it because it is going through four layers of fabric. And you're just going to continue down the full length of the planter until uh, you have it all flat. And then you're gonna join the two side edges. You're gonna do right sides together the same as in the first planter. Now for this option, I want it to be oversized, so I'm really making sure that I give at least two inches at the bottom and also about a quarter of an inch at the top so that once I do all of the attaching, it'll be very billowy and it'll be a nice floppy um, planter. To really accentuate the uh, billowy effect of the planter, I'm making a smaller circle for the bottom. This circle is about two to three inches in diameter um, so that it really makes that like puffed effect at the bottom. So our second DIY is a faux stone planter. And the way that we're gonna achieve this full stone effect is by using plaster and some paint. And I used about two to three tablespoons of plaster mix, and this I purchased at the Dollar Tree. And then I just maybe put about a teaspoon or two teaspoons of paint. And you just want to mix it up and you want to make sure that you have a nice creamy um, consistency. If it's too thick, add a little more paint. And if it isn't, then you'll add a little more of the plaster. But you just want to make sure that it's a nice creamy consistency. So once you have that achieved, you're just going to go with a sponge brush and you're just going to apply it. Now I like to go in a motion that looks a little streaky because that's how you achieve the stone look. But it's your preference. Some people go in and dab it or some people grow cross hatch. It's really your preference of how you want your stone to look at the end. Now what I also do is on the edges, I like to do a little pouncing method um, with the plaster. Um, this is mimicking the actual stone finishing of the edge. So 
So I let my first layer dry about an hour. Now I'm going in with my second coat. And you can go as thick as you like or as light as you like. I like to go a little thicker because I really like to have that textured look. So all of these summer DIYs that I'm creating today is going to be part of my part two uh, summer patio makeover that's going to be coming soon. So I hope you guys will enjoy this video and then also come back for my patio part two. it's time to have some fun so the base coat that I use was khaki so now I'm going in with a little coffee bean and I'm also going to be using a beige color and this is all top-notch paint that I got from Joanne crafts and I'm just going in with my little stencil brush that I like to do all of my distressing with and I'm just trying to do a very light um, brush effect. I'm trying not to have too much paint on my brush and so you just go in and you play with it. You can put as much as you like or you can skip this step if you just like you know the base coat but I find to make it a little more realistic you want to have a little variation in color. Okay, so our third DIY is a farmhouse tray. I'm using yet another door that was left over from my kitchen project. And I'm also using a placemat that I purchased at the Dollar Tree. So I'm just measuring it out to center it within the um, center of the door. So I'm doing some cutting on the top and the bottom. You'll see me fidget around with it and finally get it to fit. Once you get it to the right size, we're just going to add a little hot glue on the back, make sure that it's secure, and then we're going to go in with thick rope and we're just going to fill in the spaces around the edge and it's just going to make it a nice finished look on the tray. I don't know about you guys, but I feel that putting rope on any type of DIY just brings it up a level and just makes it look so beautiful. It's one of my favorite items to be able to add to a DIY. What about you guys? Do you like rope or do you have another type of material that you're that is your go-to? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. And we're just going to be adding a couple of those wooden wheels as little feet to the bottom, to the back of the tray. Um, and then we're going to go in with additional rope. I'm just making a little faux handle 
I'm going to play around with this and see how it works. If it doesn't work, I might have to drill in through the drawer, the door and just tie it. Or I might, you know, search around for some pulls to use as a permanent, um, a permanent uh, handle on this tray. But for now, I'll just keep it with the rope. DIY is a rustic planter and I'm just cutting down some furring strips that I purchased a long time ago from Home Depot. I actually was working in my garden and I took down a little structure that we used to have so I had this leftover furring strips and I said that I would make a planter with it and if you watched my patio cleanup video you would have saw that I had these little cut uh, pieces on my patio. So this is exactly what I'm using them for. So I'm just doing like a little uh, Jenga planter. Um, this is how usually how you do the blocks for Jenga. So that's the closest thing um, that I could think of to describe it. And I'm just going back and forth building um, the planter structure. And I'm using this planter as a gauge as to the height that I want it to be. So now I'm going to be painting, um, well, it's actually staining. I'm using paint, but I've watered it down because I want it to be a little more uh, the effect of stain. And I'm just going in, I'm not doing full coverage. I really want this to look like I found this wood, this planter somewhere, that it is rustic and it's just going to fit in perfectly with my patio. I think it turned out beautiful. Okay, so my fifth and final DIY is just some farmhouse coasters. This set of coasters I've had for probably 15 years. I purchased them from Ikea and they've seen better days. So I wanted to be able to breathe a little uh, new life into them. So I'm using um, my folk art chalk paint in Adirondack White. And I'm just gonna be putting two coats. I'm trying to put two coats to make it full coverage, but then still have a hint of the wood showing through. And then I'm gonna go in and distress it a little with um, some top notch paint and I'm also going to be covering the center portion of the coasters that had caulk previously with that same fabric that I'm using for the fabric planters and I'm just making a little template out of the shape the circle shape um, that's in the center and then I'm going to duplicate that Now because we use the white uh, chalk paint, I'm using the khaki and the beige to do the distressing. 
and this is really trial and error as you see I put a little too much of the khaki on initially so I'm just using one of the coasters to dry off my brush and then when you go back because the paint is still wet you're able to blend it in and you'll be able to um, cover up your original mistake and you just keep working at it you keep blending your color you keep drying off your brush and you'll achieve the combination that you like and then if you don't you can always paint over it and start again So again, I want to thank everyone for watching my video. I hope that you enjoyed all of these amazing DIYs and I hope that you can duplicate either one or more of these DIYs because they are very simple and easy to make. I just want to remind you again, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And also, since this video is a collaboration, make sure that you visit the description box, click on the link and show Antoinette simple yet chic some love. Make sure that you mention that you're coming over from Daphne's homescape. And until the next time, have a blessed day.